So welcome uh, back after the break. This is the second part of our workshop and uh, we will look at uh, at the beginning at some interconnections between tax crimes and corruption in a more you know um, precise way to try to unveil the mechanism that are behind these uh, interconnections. Uh, already something has emerged. So the first question is to look at the micro level and then we go to the you know the macro level. So the the micro level, uh, what I mean about this is that, uh, basically, there are some uh, um, corrupt, potential corrupt practices uh, that are uh, that some enablers uh, they can be uh, fostered by these enablers, uh, like uh, bankers, brokers, accountants, internal auditors, external auditors, lawyers, and they can be involved in facilitating tax crimes or aggressive tax evasion that is in the gray area that is not clear that the 50s is tax crime or, or not. Uh, so they dissimulate these things. And of course, what has emerged, uh, to give you a bit of context from our research and our round tables and the previous workshop, is that taxpayers, they cannot actually exploit this kind of things without the help of people that know the system well. Uh, so uh, the first thing is these things about competences. Now, to make an example, I think the best example is what Daniela said before. Now, reduction of VAT to 9%. For some types, if I'm misunderstood, uh, for some types of things like catering. Now, if I'm taxpayer and I think I'm not catering, but maybe somebody can sell my activity as catering uh, in an imaginative way. Uh, this can be done and I can pay 9%, not 20%, but I, I cannot do that. I need somebody that knows the system and knows how to sell it to the tax authorities. And these someone are professional enablers. This is one example. The second type of interactions that we have explored so far is interaction, be, you know, the role of these professional enablers as intermediaries. So for example, there is not, not direct contact between the tax officials or judges and prosecutors and the taxpayers or tax evaders, but you know these conducts uh, ha ha are facilitated by somebody that can mediate. They can be an intermediate figure, and somebody these people are of course accountants, tax lawyers. So the first question for you is, according to your experience, now professional for uh, uh, petal, academic, scientific, or bistra, or from media, from media what you know where about that. Uh, what, uh, what categories of tax professional uh, or professional other professional enablers are the most involved in facilitating tax crimes in Bulgaria? And uh, yeah, that's the first question. So what do you think? And what are the mechanisms that they use? Who would like to break the ice? You. <laughs> Peter, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, accountants and, uh, and lawyers uh, are uh, the, the, the features that are most important and uh, in one tax fraud scheme because they are uh familiar they know the tax law and uh they provide uh, uh advice to the organizer uh, organizers of tax fraud scheme how to be organized tax uh, this tax fraud scheme and uh, especially accountants they 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 need accountants i mean if you have a black accountant see you should have black accountancy to 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 understand what is the the profit of your tax fraud scheme. It's uh, it's not uh, uh, it's it's impossible to to have a, uh, uh, to be an interpreter uh, uh, to uh, <clears throat> to be uh, in the tax fraud market uh, without accountant. I mean, you should uh, estimate your uh, profit uh, from uh, tax fraud uh, as well as uh, your real profit in uh, according to tax law. And uh, yeah, the, this is the most important features in tax fraud scheme. And uh, we 
we uh, uh, could uh, see uh, many uh, accountants and lawyers in uh, in this in Thank this. You. Uh, Thank you, Beda. Uh, before uh, I have a sub question for you, but before that, uh, Bistra is uh, writing to me that also uh, mm -hmm. external auditors are involved. Bistra, if you can just uh, uh, take one second to, to prepare and formulate something uh, about that uh, while I'm asking a second, a sub question to Peta, because I would like you to, to expand a bit on uh, external auditor. This is very interesting for me. Uh, Peta, uh, in the meantime, uh, Yes, so uh, accountants and lawyers. Do you think they are, from your experience, of course, mutually uh, relevant? Is one of the two categories more relevant? They must be always involved, both of them, because you, have to, you need both legal advice plus uh, accountancy advice. Or do you think that somehow one of the two categories is, you know, can go alone and can do everything? For example, accountants mm -hmm. can do mm -hmm. both. What do, what do you think is the, the issue in, in Bulgaria? Uh, accountants is more important. You, uh, you can create a tax fraud scheme. It's not so let's say it's not so complicated uh, uh, but you should have accountant uh, uh, just like a absolutely necessary uh, thing in uh, in one tax fraud scheme okay uh, so if understood well this is a very important point uh, peter so uh, basically the complexity of the um, organization of the accounts uh, need make it necessary to have an accountant, whereas the law, uh, the legal advice is relevant, but uh, can be, you know, not always there. Yeah, but sometimes when you have a, let's say, a more complex scheme, when you have a, 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 com, a, a complex and complicated uh, relations between um, uh, between uh, the 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 perpetrators uh, you should have a lawyer as well but uh, de de uh, definitely it's not uh, it's not necessary in all cases this is very yeah. interesting. So when the relationship between the perpetration and the defender is complex, for example, there are different uh, legal entities or different uh, level of uh, uh, partnership, you need uh, also legal assistance. But when it's not like that, the accountant can solve everything. Thank you. It's very, very interesting point, actually. Uh, now, Bistra, if you can please expand, uh, what is about the role of external uh, auditors? I think... Uh... Uh, they can facilitate uh, tax evidence, uh, tax evasions, because uh, they uh, have a uh, very high uh, knowledge and uh, in uh, with legislation, legislation, and it's very easy for them uh, to facilitate tax evasions. I mean, external auditors and tax wars. This is a very good point. So uh, they do not create the scheme, but they're in the position to unveil it and they don't do it. Uh, basically, is that the point? I think is this the point? I cannot hear uh, you very well. Please, one more time. Uh, I was saying that basically they uh, do not create the scheme but they can unveil it, and but they don't do it. They can uh, yes. monitor, then don't do it. Yeah. Yes, so they, they are... give advices to to, uh, to participate to schemes. Oh, they okay. can also give active advice. Okay, even if yeah. they are... Oh, okay, this is a very good point. Thank mm -hmm. you, uh, thank you, uh, Bistra. So Vera, if you would like to intervene from a media perspective, is uh, this uh, role of enablers emerging? Are you covering this? Uh, uh, more, I wanted to, to prov provoke a bit because uh, in, the, uh, in public they say uh, tax fraud cannot occur without tax officials. Is it true or not? It's more provo provocative question. Who would like to ask this question? Peter, I think you are involved in this. Uh, how, uh, yeah, how yeah, would... I'm from tax administration, of course. No, I'm not the tax fraudster. But uh, um, uh, yeah, um, um, let's, uh, let's say in this way. 
uh, the tax roads it's easier when you have support from uh, someone uh, uh, from administration it's not necessary to have uh, uh, support from uh, from uh, insider uh, from administration uh, but uh, but it's easier and uh, yeah i i i i know some cases when uh, when uh, the things are let's say rotten you can see that uh, it's obvious there is a tax road and someone should do some uh, should, uh, should did something in uh, in uh, in uh, when uh, they uh, saw the the indicators from uh, from the from the uh, for the tax uh, fraud but uh, uh, but it's not so frequently it's not so quite often to see that cases in most of the cases <coughs> They, uh, they don't need uh, uh, support from uh, insider from administration. They just organize uh, the, the tax fraud scheme. And when we they register a missing trader, they just register the next one in the in the in the from the queue of the potential missing traders. And uh, they uh, 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 continue with this activity. I mean, Peter, this, uh, Peter, this is very interesting and very clear uh, for us. So yes, so they don't need an insider from tax uh, administration, but if they have it, it is much uh, easier and also safer for them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have to, uh, to highlight, Peter, what are the vulnerabilities of the uh, tax officials? Why in these uh, you know, uncommon occasions, as you said, they can participate in this. Is this a, a cultural issue? Is the salary is not enough? Uh, is the uh, contiguity with lawyers? Uh, is political reason? What are the drivers of this? Uh, you know, what do you think are the drivers for them to be involved in this? In this? You're, you're muted. You are muted. Yeah, now I'm Thank not you. muted, but uh, 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 my internet, uh, I was out of, in the, of uh, internet connection and I uh, couldn't hear your question. Oh, Can you question, repeat it? Yeah. See, my question is, it's very clear what you said. So sometimes if you have an insider for topic administration, it's better and it's safer. But mm -hmm. this not, doesn't happen a lot of times. This is clear. But so my question for you is, what are the vulnerabilities of the tax uh, officials? Why sometimes they accept to be involved? Is there an issue of salaries that are too low? They want to get more money. Cultural issue, uh, contiguity with lawyers or enablers, mm -hmm. or political reason to support somebody. What do you think are the drivers? Uh, political reasons. This is obvious questions. Uh, uh, obvious answer. I mean, uh, because um, uh, there is a political influence in some cases, uh, and uh, this is the reason uh, uh, for uh, taking decision which is not according to the law. And, uh, so it's, it's coming from the top uh, uh, because the the one that is evading as a not from the management of administration, but but from uh, political parties uh, or politician external external yes. political influence. Uh, sometimes on the on the local level, which uh, uh, political uh, factors have uh, uh, influence uh, on the local level. Um, sometimes maybe on a central level, uh, <laughs> as uh, uh, yeah, it, it's possible. Yeah, de this definitely. is very interesting because so so is uh, because we look at this form of uh, undue pressure that is coming from uh, you know the the big guys. Let me say, let let's say let's speak in these ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is more relevant than that they want to earn more money. It's oh, not an uh, issue. Yeah, I mean. Uh, this is uh, 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 this is the most important. Uh, let's say this is the the most important reason. Uh, I mean, for the for the big corruption, uh, for the for the big uh, yeah for yeah for the for the big deals. But uh, when you have uh, uh, let's say corruption on the on the wall levels, uh, when you, we are talking about the money. Uh, 
small money, but money. And this creates uh, 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 a sense of, uh, uh, of injustice uh, in, uh, in uh, society. Uh, when you uh, have a uh, check uh, from uh, someone from the National Revenue Agency and uh, he uh, takes from you, for example, 40 level or 20 euro or something like that, uh the 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 the, the society uh, of course uh, uh do not react uh, uh with uh let's say with uh, uh uh with understanding oh hey these guys they have a uh, small salaries of course uh, it 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 should be uh, uh we should react in this uh, uh against this uh definitely this is very interesting. Thank you, uh, Peter. Uh, this sense of injustice can be another driver, not the most important one, but it's, it's relevant. And I absolutely think it is. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Vera, from uh, the media, do you cover this kind of thing? This is uh, something that you look at uh, or not? Uh, yes, sometimes when we have enough information, we do. Uh, the media at home. Any any Was case your... any any case that you remember that you can uh, make an example that you mm. that you follow or you read. Mm. Well, what I have heard maybe is more like uh, some um, official some politics who try to. To affect the uh, the tax uh, officials, sometimes it happens on uh, not only in the uh, not on the national level, but uh, sometimes in some uh, small cities. Sometimes it happens. So this is good because the media, mm -hmm. uh, Peter, the media are corroborating what you said, basically. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you very much, uh, Vera. So now, are these lawyers uh, or these accountants? that are involved in this kind of schemes as enablers, fostering, helping, are they usually you know, punished in any way, disciplinary punished by the, their bar association, or this does not happen uh, as, as far as you know? I think uh, there is no established practice in this regard. And uh, uh, Bistra, good, uh, there is no established practicing uh, yes. even in the other countries. So this is a common problem. Yeah. So there is no practice of looking at these unethical conduct and uh, uh, sanction them. So this is also uh, in Bulgaria, basically. Okay, this is a good point. So let's go ahead. Um, so... Um, the, the next point that this is very interesting is the macro level. So what I mean here is that the recent studies have highlighted uh, that business interest groups, uh, pressure groups, political groups, we already touched it a bit. They might influence the political decision-making process in our democracies. Now, we are not speaking about politicians that uh, you know, uh, exert its pressure on a tax official but they start they exert their pressure on the entire system so they make the system not working as it should they don't give for example enough money enough resources enough training to the uh, tax official the investigating authorities they lobbying to avoid a certain criminalization of certain practices you know they affect the system as a whole they do not just you know uh, you know give this pressure to a single person is this happening in bulgaria what do you think is this a, a are there examples problems what is your experience about this sort of undue influence on, on the the system i think the last example is with the uh, uh, vat uh a reduction uh, in the in the rest for the restaurants for example it it happened the, the way you was talking about lastly in bulgaria vera can you expand a bit uh mm. why do you think this is uh, extensions to the restaurant 
has you know been influenced by this undue pressure? Uh, because they had some uh, very close contacts with uh, our politician uh, at this moment. At this, uh, it was crisis. They uh, they said they will have they will uh, prepare strikes. So the politicians <laughs> decide to to lower the the VAT for them. For example, it's yeah, an this example. Is, this is a good point. Uh, yes, yeah, some uh, there. I, I'm sure there are much more examples. Some are hidden; they don't uh, happen in the, in public, but you can see the um, the result after usually. Vera, this is exactly mm -hmm. the. To be honest with all of you guys, this is exactly the mm -hmm. problem of our research. We understand that these th things are happening, but these are uh, you know backroom deals. You never have evidence. Of course, of yes. yes. Of course. <laughs> and as an investigative journalist, you know that. But we are trying to gather evidence that this is happening all over Europe. So this is not happening just in Bulgaria. It's happening all over Europe, different ways and different uh, forms. But this is a common thread. So Peter uh, Bistra would like to add something on this institutional corruption. It's a very important topic for us. I want to clarify something. This measure to reduce uh, VAT uh, rate uh, from 20% uh, to 9% is only for one year. It's against uh, pandemic. It's measures against pandemic. Only to clarify these measures. It's uh, only one year during the uh, current year. Uh, I uh, would like to give uh, other example in uh, your uh, question, last question. I think the tone of the talk is crucial for the normal function, functions of tax administration. Uh, in this regard, the appointment of the new head of the revenue agency is uh, indicative of the ability of oligarchic circles to impose their interests. This situation is worsened by the existence of uh, vicious practice in the juridical system in, at home in our country. Okay, so, so basically the, the oligarchs are the most influential group of pressure that can uh, yes. manipulate uh, the, the legal system as a whole. Uh, this is a very interesting point and, uh, and uh, uh, thank you for raising this. Peter, from... Uh, from an operative perspective, uh, do you feel uh, uh, this general influence on the system or you don't feel it? Um, I mean, no, uh, uh, the, the general influence on the system is a uh, system to be, uh, to, 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 to develop in, uh, in a better way. I mean, because if you are a big company and uh, uh, you want to, to, to crack down the competition, the, uh, the administration uh, is the way to, uh, to, to influence on the smaller companies. Uh, that's why uh, some of the companies, uh, uh, the big companies, they they want to to have a clean market and uh, to have a uh, good working administration. I mean, uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not uh, that kind of uh, uh, system that. Uh, uh, it's not that kind of influence that they want to 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 weaker the system. No, they they want to have a, uh, the the big players. They want to have a, a, a good tax administration. Uh, in more reasons, I don't want to to go in depth, but uh, but definitely they want to to have a good uh, tax administration and to uh, tax administration to work better and better. And, and uh, this is the point of the big companies, uh, especially yeah. I think the multinational enterprises. Yeah. What about uh, the local, uh, uh, you know, companies that can have, you know, can be favorite by uh, some political uh, sides? Uh, are these uh, going in an opposite direction? Uh, 
they want to have a good administration as well. I mean, because there are two ways uh, to uh, to uh, to to be on a market, to to use administration, uh, let's say, in an unfair way. One way is uh, uh, to waive you from uh, from tax obligations to uh, tax uh, proceedings to be unfair to be not according the law when we come in your company but the other way is uh, to send tax administration to uh, your uh, 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 oh sorry that's my phone uh, uh, to, to send tax administration to uh, your concurrent to to your competent uh, 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 to on the market to other trader which is uh, uh, which is uh, your enemy let's say in this way okay. and to use tax administration uh, in a way to uh, to to set him in a very bad position. In trouble. And, so that this, this, yeah. is, this is very interesting. So the abuse is uh, to direct uh, uh, even a very efficient tax administration to uh, your opponent. Yeah. That's uh, so why they... you need a good working tax administration to do this. This to is a very interesting in point, use. Peter. Yeah. Very interesting point. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, last question, then I asked our um, project expert to intervene. The last question uh, in this area is... Uh, we spoke about, and Peter was very clear that, that there is a lack of training or, or some training of few days that do not, you know, uh, do so many things. And I use, we usually give these trainings. To, so <laughs> you are right. These are not, you know, the way that you should uh, operate. Uh, what uh, is my question here is, is there a gap between uh, uh, the knowledge of prosecutors and tax officials and the knowledge, the technical and legal knowledge of big law firms, big accounting uh, you know, firms, the big four, is this a big gap that can be used uh, against the efficiency of the system? So this is my question. And Bistra, you have, uh, you have sp spoken about the external auditor, you study in economics. So do you think that these big uh, firms have a competitive advantage against the state, in a way, uh, the public administration. What do you think? I sorry, but I cannot discuss uh, to go deeper in this question. Not right now. OK, that's fine. Uh, thank you. And uh, Peter, uh, do you think that uh, there is a gap of knowledge between uh, tax officials and prosecutors and private uh, or, you know, accountants, uh, big four, big firms. Uh, so in, there is a huge gap of uh, expertise that they can be exploited. Uh, sorry, can you clarify the question? The question, I mean, a uh, gap between uh, the level of knowledge in tax administration and level of knowledge uh, of uh, big four, for example. Yeah, uh, <laughs> knowledge and skill between uh -huh. the public administration and private, big private companies that work in the area of taxation, like big four or big law firms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so, because we have a, a, a one unit which is uh, uh, competent uh, on uh, big, uh, big taxpayers. Uh, this is a special directorate and uh, these guys, they work there only with uh, big taxpayers. They work with uh, big accountant companies. And uh, I think that they are competent enough when we talking about uh, big market players. Uh, That's good. Uh, and uh, Peter, uh, having this specialized unit, have you ever experienced uh, 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 the phenomenon of so-called revolving doors, where good experts in the public administration, they are hired uh, by these you know, big uh, firms uh, for uh, various purposes, for their knowledge, but also to create a contact, you know, a connection with uh, the official. Is this happening? Is this a phenomenon that is happening in, uh, in Bulgaria? Yeah, there is a... Sometimes there is a transfer from uh, 
tax administration to to these big companies. It happens sometimes, uh, but I don't think that this is uh, that this is a system. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, these guys they they have a uh, uh, let's say they have a, a, a constant relations. They know each other because the uh, uh, the tax auditors that they that work with the big companies they are a limited number and uh, of course big four for example the, they have a new limited number of employees as well and they know each other they uh, often uh, frequently they transfer uh, knowledge and uh, um, about uh, uh, the tax obligations, about tax laws and things like that. But I don't think that this is... Uh... We lost you on the most important uh, point. Peta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, oh. Bistra and Vera, uh, if you can... Oh, Petar, you are back, you're back. Yes, now I'm going to switch to the next one. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Uh, Petar, you are back. Uh, yeah. We lost you with the final comment. Uh, we understand that it's not a systemic <laughs> thing. We understand that the, the, the environment is very small, a uh, few players, so they know each other already. So I'm. Um, the question was, uh, is there for you this this transferring of you know uh, of knowledge and skill and this uh, contiguity is in any way problematic no i don't think that this is problematic thing that At that all. was the, the 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 that was my point yeah uh because uh, this is a, a way of uh, providing information from tax administration it's an official way but it's the, it's normal way to provide information from tax administration to to taxable persons okay and, uh, this, is... this is this is important for uh, execution of law and uh, for uh, yeah for this is clear this is clear uh, to me uh, bistra would you like to add something on this uh, yes, maybe something I uh, found in my practice, in my research, I mean, uh, the other case, the willingness of uh, revenue authorities to disclose tax uh, violations and uh, evaded taxes is not always accepted favorably. I mean, in administration, in tax administration, it is possible that uh, his efforts to review abuses outside the established practice in the administration may provoke a negative reaction to him in uh, the workplace and unfavorable treatment by his colleagues or managers. Sometimes it's not standard, but sometimes it's happened. Uh, in this sense, the tone of the top is decisive. One more time, I want to focus attention on that topic. Thank you very much. And uh, we will look at uh, some issue of uh, revealing uh, in, uh, so on uh, information. Uh, I just wanted to stimulate Vera. Vera, from a media perspective, is the phenomenon of revolving doors uh, you know, covered uh, or an issue in Bulgaria, or this is not relevant for, uh, it's not catching media attention? Mm. More from my uh, conversations from uh, with uh, tax uh, uh, um, tax lawyers uh, from Big Four and some others, they they say uh, the same that Mr. Tsankov said before some minutes. So it's not an issue in Bulgaria so much like so in some other countries, I think. Okay, thank you for that. Let's go on. Now we have. Um... We are trying to identify some specific vulnerabilities uh, of tax authorities and other relevant agencies. But before going there, I would like to um, stimulate our uh, project experts uh, to intervene on the issue of uh, this mechanism of corruption, of enablers, and of institutional corruption. So please, if you have any questions, but if you have 
mm, most importantly, some something to add, some comments to this uh, that we, you know we didn't address well. Can you please intervene? I can I, I can say a few, uh, uh, a few things, uh, Costa, if you allow me. Of um, course. I, it's th these are of course very sensitive issues, and uh, it's very difficult to talk about them. And in particular, when you mix corruption and and uh, uh, and fraud and tax uh, tax fraud or, or uh, uh, non-payment of, uh, of taxes, and clearly, I mean, it's um, uh, it, it has many different levels. You know, you have uh, 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 you have the, um, you know, the, mo the more low level uh, 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 corruption where, uh, at least from our experience, from I mean, with CSD work for 20 something years on, on corruption issues, and we know that the, the areas that are most affected by corruption in any administration, it's not just the tax administration, uh, 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 are, are the control and compliance. I mean, so these people that have the power to inflict uh, 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 you know, essentially pain on on the business or, or on the on the population. I mean, so that, that these are the people that work in um, uh, sanctioning, so in 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 uh, investigations, um, uh, and this is this is typically where we've um, um, uh, we've 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 seen issues. You know, the thing is, there are very few judicial records on that, uh, you know, in, in, in on corruption as a whole. I mean, annually you have uh, uh, between 120 and 200 cases of, of corruption that are investigated and uh, none of them is with effective, uh, uh, let's say, sentence. I mean, essentially you, you pay some fines or you have, uh, you know, suspended sentence and stuff like that. So this gives you an idea of how hidden the whole issue is. And of course, um, uh, in that respect, the, um, the the issue of corruption within uh, within tax uh, and uh, essentially uh, VAT fraud. I mean, VAT is the largest uh, source of um, uh, of the Bulgarian budget. So Bulgaria is an is a, is a, is an indirect taxation uh, country. So we rely a lot on VAT. So there are two, uh, uh, in a way very strong counterbalancing forces. On the one hand side, every politician, tax administration and, and everybody else are very much interested to increase that and to get all the tax uh, that is out there. On the other hand side, of course, uh, if you are able to evade uh, VAT, uh, this gives you a huge, because it's 20%, this gives you a huge uh, and particularly if you're also in, in excise duties, which usually when you evade tax, you know, VAT, you also evade the excise duties like uh, cigarettes, tobacco, you know, uh, uh, fuels and stuff like you evade, it gives you a huge competitive edge. So we've had, we have many, many stories in, in fuels, in cigarettes, you know, in, you know, all these excise, uh, excise duties. The last thing that I saw just today was the... Uh, was cars. I mean, they pe people and you know people are very inventive. Uh, you know, essentially they th so th they import cars from third countries, meaning probably Western Balkans, I would guess, or Turkey, or, or you know uh, the the uh, the Caucasus. Uh, they import cars and then they declare them as broken. You know, so they reduce very swiftly the, the value of the cars and this of course involves I mean it surely involves corruption because whoever checks upon the car uh, you know on entry uh, and it's a big item you know it's not something that you could <laughs> actually stash away somewhere so it's very easily visible so we see all these issues you know so it's, it, it is that there are a lot of, uh, of issues between corruption and VAT uh, fraud for example and um, uh, on, we've had a number of issues with uh, grain trade, uh, you know, for years. That's why they they introduced the reverse charge now, uh, which means it was institution. I mean, essentially, uh, everybody said they couldn't deal. I mean, they couldn't handle it. Uh, there is a lot of uh, of issues of and cases of fraud of, of so so called uh, uh, diesel for agriculture. You know, because it. Uh, you know, essentially, they uh, you know they, they don't pay the same amount of excise. So it's uh, all these issues. So there are lo lots of lo and and this is of course one of the most 
focused uh, uh, areas. And of course, there are the enablers. I mean, in all the and, and when I'm talking about that, and I understand also my colleagues, it's very difficult to talk about these issues because there, there are no cases with final judgments, you know. So you can't, essentially, you can't, you can't say which is which because courts haven't really uh, dealt with that. Uh, but in all the cases, I mean, if you look at the, uh, at, at the, we had two really huge cases, actually three now, we have, we have people Actually, last month we had three people designated for by the U.S. For, under the Global Magnitsky Act, which is the biggest designation ever under that act. Uh, and if you look at who are the designated people, you know you could see the enablers. Uh, uh, the enablers were, of course, lawyers, uh, top spot, and of course accountants. You know people that were close. You know you could see in in the bank, for example, because we had a, a major collapse of a of a bank in 2014. Uh, what came out essentially was that they were using uh, a lot of you know a lot of straw men, as 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 uh, Bistra mentioned in the beginning. I think this is this is very very important. Uh, you know, so this this is this is very useful. But essentially, they were using everybody. You know, from the uh, as a straw person, you know, from the uh, 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 top, you know, executive directors to uh, the uh, the cleaning ladies. I mean, or, or, so it, it was really it was all the drivers, you know, of, of the bank. So it was really uh, a, 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 a very interesting uh, criminal enterprise. But the fact is, for seven years they haven't been able to indict every any anyone. I mean, essentially. Uh, and this this is this was raised in another issue you know how 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 long does it take to essentially indict somebody and i think here it's a combination between as peter mentioned uh it's it, it, uh, these these are very complex cases you know and in particular when you have to uh prove corruption it's it's virtually i think under the current setting of the bulgarian law it's virtually possible you know without some very detailed and complex uh kind of investigative methods you know because you have two sides that are both uh liable you know if you provide a, if you give a bribe you're liable uh so it has to be something you know uh, really ex uh, uh, exclusive in a way so i'm i'm thinking it's it's a very it's a very interesting area topic that you have chosen and as you mentioned, it's one of the most difficult to, to study, you know, because there are very few cases that have finished with court sentences, uh, you know, or at least uh, plea bargains or, or stuff like that. So and in particular... uh, I totally agree. I totally agree. And, uh, and uh, I understand that this is a very sensitive area uh, is everywhere like that, of course. And uh, every country is uh, has these challenges, Ruslan. Is not only Bulgaria. I, every country at the various level. It's very difficult to speak about that. So, like, I really appreciate what we have said so far because we said so many important things. Uh, one point that I wanted you to expand because everything is clear to me. One point is clear, but I want you to, to expand a bit. In Italy, for example, uh, there has been a case where uh, that emerged in the workshop that we had on the 29th of April. Uh, the tax administration. Uh, was colluding with some tax uh, lawyers. And of course, they, you know, they allow some tax evasion. But then at a certain point, there was not enough tax evasion. So they didn't have enough customers in the corruption scheme. So what they did, as you said, they were in the position of control and of imposition of sanctions. So they threatened clean companies that were clean but they went there they start looking at everything you know you cannot be 100 saint so they were under this you know lens and they basically to go out of this lens they had to pay <laughs> the, the corruption so uh so the abuse of the powers of the checker uh you know this is happening it's not it's happening uh, in europe i mean not in bulgaria so this abuse you you mentioned this but you were a bit uh Vague, let me say. Can you expand a bit more? Well, yes. Well, it's uh, first of all, it's. Um, I think this is where uh, th this was part of the reason, for example, that the businesses didn't didn't go after this regulation H18. I mean, I understand here, Peter and uh, the tax administration, where they say this was very useful. I agree. It would have been very useful uh, to 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 use it in terms of. Uh, in terms of revealing uh, turnover, uh, you know, t company turnover, uh, and I can say that at least in 
uh, I mean, in the beginning of, of the pandemic, I think it was very telling that uh, uh, some of the tax return didn't, uh, you know, essentially didn't fall, you know, because a lot of, the, of, of that is hidden. You know, people don't declare their actual, uh, their actual tax return, in, in particular in, in, in tourism, uh, you know, this is huge. I mean, I remember I was, uh, we had an intern once and uh, before that she was uh, interning somewhere at the seaside, you know, in a small private hotel. And I was like, we were, we were researching the hidden economy, you know, so I asked, you know, so, you know, our, our investigations show, you know, our indexes show that we have like 32% uh, of hidden economy. And she said like, well, it's rather 82 and I said, how do you know it's 82 exactly? I mean, she said, well, because I was doing the, the account, the, the books, you know, <laughs> of these guys. So it's, so she said, you know, it's, they, they had, you know, more like uh, four fifths of their turnover, uh, you know, and I've seen this also in the, and the tax administration has improved their risk assessment. So we've seen, but we've seen, you know, whatever tax administration goes after, you know, uh, winter or summer resorts, you know, they, uh, there is a, there is an actual you know, tax visit, you know, uh, you know, inspection, uh, turnover jumps like four or five times. And then when they, they, they move out and then falls back again, you know, uh, so it's a, it's a, it's, it's a clear case of cat and mouse uh, game. But, uh, uh, one of the things is clear, uh, you know, this is again, people not for, not by chance, people say that this is, I mean, we've had, I mean, the last time we had such a survey, uh, was unfortunately in 2016, uh, but still people said, you know, the businesses and and the, the people said that this is the this is the most uh, problematic area, you know, where you have control, um, uh, you impose control, and in the tax administration, there is this is a very um, uh, just like in the in 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 the prosecution, they could inflict a lot of pain on a business without necessarily finishing that as you said i mean they could start a they could start a check where they could block a company um for months essentially or take a lot of your internal resources in terms of people you know so that they respond so this is really this is really a big issue uh you know we've seen the last such public scandal i think uh, vera would also remember so much last public scandal was about a company a toys company that was apparently part of the protests against the government and they sent tax uh, checks on them uh, not just tax but also i think uh, labor inspectors and stuff like that so this is i mean this is one area where clearly uh, there is there is potential for abuse now i have to say that with time these procedures have improved a lot but still there is tremendous possibility for abuse you know the uh, previously i mean now they the 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 revenue agency of course has many different ways of uh of of uh prioritizing you know of looking at risk factors and of course if you are checking upon companies that are not within the risk profile don't fall in the risk profile then you have to explain why you're doing that uh but at the same time there is there 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 hasn't been much of a uh how to say a, a, a judicial control, you know, of, of what exactly is going on, because we haven't seen many cases being finished, uh, you know, in, in, in that respect, uh, because essentially not many cases end up in, in, in court. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, prosecutors don't understand the whole tax issue, you know, they don't understand how it functions and so on and so forth. So I'm certain, I mean, again, we don't have numbers. I mean, we can't show them. If you look Ruslan, at the- uh, we, have, we are short of time, but you're, you have been uh, fantastic. So I, I have understood everything and it's very clear. It makes sense. It, it's corroborated by what Peter said, you know, the, the influence from the extern, external, you know, pressures. It's, 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 uh, it happens. We, we understand. I just would like to uh, ask Vera if she would like to intervene again on institutional corruption. On these cases, uh, um, Ruzan was uh, mentioning on the, this high level uh, corruption. Uh, uh, yes, can you specify specify a bit the, the question? Sorry, it's it's an open question to mm -hmm. you. Uh, any comment about the the corruption or uh, pressure that is at a high level 
from big political pressure on the system to avoid the system to work in some way or, or you know, this kind of things. And uh, also, I think Ruslan was po pinpointing to the case of these uh, um, companies that were, you know, in a way retaliated oh, yes, by I the government. Yes, I remember the, the case. So uh, can you, uh, you know, your opinion? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, in it, I think it happens. Uh, it was happened very often in Bulgaria the last years. At least that is the the what society thinks. It's it's the the feeling. But uh, uh, we are in a in a strange situation now because we we uh, have uh, elections soon. So uh, I think people expect uh, some. Uh, uh, aspects of this uh, kind of uh, pressure to, to become uh, lower with, with the time, but <laughs> we will see. So it's very, um, it's a strange moment at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. It's, it's a critical mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but, you know, there is this pressure. So thank you so much for acknowledging this. So, okay, now let's go on with the, uh, uh, then there's also Donato who would like to ask a question, but Donato, please, uh, just in a few moments, because I would like to look at uh, uh, very briefly now, because we are going a short of time, uh, vulnerabilities of investigative authorities, tax authorities. Do you feel that you have sufficient power to do your job? Do you feel that you have sufficient resources to do your job? Uh, you already, Peter, of course, said about the skills that uh, uh, you have a specialized unit, but prosecutors, they do not have it. What about uh, human resources? What about uh, computing uh, power? Uh, you know, what, what do you think? What is the overall situation? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we have a specialized unit. Uh anti-fraud unit uh, which uh, ha has a competence uh, uh, this unit has a competence to um, uh, to identify the, the and, uh, 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 tax fraud cases and to monitor uh, let's say suspicious uh, 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 taxable persons um, yeah uh, the the question about the uh, 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 I, uh, I uh, uh, let's say that uh, uh, you are from Italy yes and uh, uh, according to my experience uh, it's absolutely uh, necessary to have something like uh, Guardia di Finanza I'm a uh, 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 geek on that uh, uh, tax administration to have a uh, uh, powers in criminal proceedings. That is uh, uh, the the missing thing uh, in the process, because we have uh, powers in administrative proceedings. Uh, we have computing. We have a uh, cooperation with uh, Ministry of Interior with the Prosecution Office. Uh, of course, this cooperation is quite uh, difficult sometimes because uh, we have. Uh, 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 quite different goals in our proceedings. I mean, uh, one is the goal in administrative proceedings. The other thing is uh, in uh, penal proceedings. I mean, uh, that's why it's quite hard to 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 create a, a, a successful process of cooperation between. Uh, 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 prosecution office and uh, the National Revenue Agency, and uh, and uh, uh, there is a lack of competences in um, in uh, uh, both administration. We don't have a competences about um, about the criminal proceedings. We don't know how to 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 collect evidence uh, that uh, could be used uh, and could be useful in uh, 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 penal proceedings. And uh, in the criminal proceedings, uh, there is a big lack of competence about uh, about the way of uh, uh, creating of tax frauds, about the way uh, schemes of tax frauds, about the uh, profit, about the relations, uh, and uh, all the things uh, related with the structurizing and organizing of tax frauds. 
and uh, that's why uh, uh, there should uh, we should have a uh, uh, special unit uh, with uh, uh, that could be in a, uh, uh, could be situated in a, in a national revenue agency that uh, could have a, a, a administrative and uh, uh, competences and uh, pin of uh, powers uh, to to uh, to to have powers in uh, in both uh, in uh, Peter, this is yeah. this is very clear to me and this is something that is emerging uh, quite a lot and uh, and uh, it's good that you know when you say guarda mm -hmm. di finanza so i have one corp that can do investigation criminal and tax investigation at the same time there are also alternatives uh, for example in the united states as you mentioned there is the joint uh, uh, action of the irs and doj that they work together on permanent basis so they can investigate crimes and tax violation at yeah. the same time uh, these are necessary i agree with you because otherwise you are right you know you do not have uh, uh, instruments to, to 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 investigate the crime and they do not understand yeah, the taxation yeah. issue so there is every, no dialogue uh, every country the, that is successful country like netherlands for example they have a fiat and you know fiat what is this uh, and uh, uh, for example in belgium they uh, sent uh, they have a tax uh, officials that they that work in uh, in uh, uh, offices of uh, of uh, prosecution offices, I mean uh, yes, yes, I, uh, this is very clear. This so is, this is the, this the is crucial, clear. So it's a crucial. very important vulnerability that you raise. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I have to rush a bit because we have 50 minutes and we have three questions. So very quickly, the the question number ten is about uh, corporate uh, liability. So legal entities can they be liable for tax crimes in your jurisdiction? This is the first question. Uh, can they be directly liable as legal entities, not the people inside the corporation, but the corporation itself? Is it possible? Yeah. Uh, no, very clear answer and very quick. No. Thank you so much. This is a very good thing. Uh, it's not uh, uncommon, even in Italy, it, they, it was not possible. Uh, but now it, it must be done because the directive, uh, so at least for the VAT fraud, they must be. Uh, Ruslan, just a quick question for you. Do you know if uh, the, the last directive has any change in these terms, in uh, at least for VAT in Bulgaria, or not yet? I don't think there is there is a change yet. I mean, at least in that respect, in respect to okay. the liability of corporates. Okay, per perfect. Uh, so uh, now an interesting point for us and uh, is about whistleblower. So whistleblowers we know that they play a fundamental role in unveiling uh, uh, tax evasion in unveiling uh, uh, corruption especially when uh, uh, when uh, ruslan uh, told us you know this is very difficult to let these things emerge you have only two choices actually or very intrusive uh, investigative techniques like phone tappings very difficult to be done or you need a whistleblower you need uh, someone that knows things and speak if you can have them so my question is, are whistleblowing emerging as important in Bulgaria in the area of anti-corruption and uh, tax evasion? And have they been retaliated? If you have experience of this, that it happened, that they, they are retaliation, they are fired, or they are, you know, other form of retaliation. And third, how do you as, uh, uh, assess the quality of the protection that the system gives to these people? So. Please, guys, this is very important aspect. So, what do you think? Yeah, of course, it, uh, this is uh, very important. Uh, this is a very, uh, let's say, uh, very important source of information. But uh, uh, we cannot support whistle, whistleblowing in, uh, like in other countries. For example, manager of uh, one very big company in Bulgaria, we had a, an official meeting with uh, with uh, this guy, and uh, he uh, uh, suggested uh, uh, whistleblowers to be, um, let's say, awarded in some way. For example, uh, two percent of the of the tax uh, uh, of the tax evasion. 
of the of the taxes that uh, uh, are uh, has been recovered. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, some kind of institute uh, in um, in uh, our uh, uh, legislature. Bistra. Uh, I could say that in most of the cases. Peter, please, I, I lost oh. you for one moment. Go for it. Yeah, the go on, Peter. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, uh, I don't know uh, where I was. You out, were you but... were uh, you were saying that in one specific case you witnessed something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. It, it's not so important, but I could say in, that in most of the cases, uh, whistleblowers uh, they are already fired. I mean, uh, uh, it's uh, it's hard to be abused because they are whistleblowers because they are out of the entrepreneur, uh, about, uh, out of the trader, and uh, they try to to create some kind of revenge in most of the cases. So, so do you think that uh, uh, they blew they blew the whistle because uh, they have already been uh, hosted by the uh, out of the mm -hmm. system and they uh, retaliate in this way, uh, yeah. unveiling these things? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Bistra, uh, would you like to add something? Yes, uh, I think uh, the introduction of whistleblowers protection is lagging behind in our country. In the cases of revenge for signal against corruption, adequate actions are not taken to repair the damage for the whistleblowers. Uh, good point. Thank you for that. Uh, Vera, from the media perspective, uh, what is the perception of the society about whistleblowing? Are they considered as traitors uh, in a bad way? Or as it's happening more and more in the Western democracy as a uh, heroes of our society. I think uh, it really depends on the case, of course, in general. But uh, media always are uh, welcome the whistleblowers. <laughs> so it's our work to, to, to find them and to work with them uh, in general. I think, uh, uh, I think uh, in, a, in a personal um, point of view, uh, you can give, uh, for example, um, when you want to, to give a signal for some tax evasion, it's not, uh, it's not anonymous in Bulgaria or any corruption when, in, if you want to give a formal signal. And that stops some people. I know mm -hmm. why, why, why it's done, but I think it stops some people to, to, give, to give such signals. So can you, can you, can you explain to, uh, this is not clear, what, does the, what is stopping them? Uh, they they worry they can uh, be <laughs> uh, that the institution can whistle blow to the to the company or the people you give the signal against to tell them that it's you, for example. Oh, oh so so basically, what you are saying mm -hmm. is this: is that the anonymous channels mm -hmm. that even if they exist, the the people they do not uh, rely on them. Things that they are not working well. Yes. So I they can so. be they can be somebody that can unveil the who was and they will be retaliated. Costa, I could I could explain a little bit just yes, very, very briefly. Uh, we adopted specific legislation that does not allow anonymous signals for corruption. So you have to identify yourself to the authorities with your full name, uh, uh, you know, personal identification number, and so on. So on. and people and given the very low level of trust in public institutions and uh, all the leaks that we've had. I mean, we had a ma several massive leaks in the, in the past, uh, you know, of, of, of public data, both from the public and the, from the private sector. Uh, this is one of the critical deterrents to whistleblowers, you know, that I think a very few people would be, I mean, uh, would want to do that. And also the lack of protection, because you also said that the protection is not really there. So, so, uh, so your point is negative. I mean, uh, so it shouldn't be uh, like that. You should have anonymous I, channels. I, I think so. I think we were actually, as a as a think tank, as an NGO in Bulgaria, we were advocating very strongly that this is not the case because you know anonymous channel. I, we understand anonymous channel, anonymous signals, of course. 
can lead to a lot of uh, uh, work, you know, so that they could uh, filter them. But at the same time, we think with the current level of technology development, this is, and for, for a country like Bulgaria, this is actually quite doable. So uh, it, this, this would have been a, an important way to, uh, you know, to, to actually uh, allow this, you know, anonymous. This anonymous is very signal. interesting. Thank you for that. And uh, okay, so we are going to close uh, uh, with the last question. Now, the last question uh, is uh, an open question. So it means it's an, a question for everybody not just for the panel expert but also for the project expert is an open question to know like a magic wand how to change but before going this way i would like to ask dr vozza to ask his question uh he wanted to ask a question so please even if it's uh, related to, to enforcement or to uh, public uh, european prosecutors please uh donato uh yeah Thank you very much, Costa. I have a, just a, a last question. Thank you to you and Lorenzo for the kind invitation. Um, uh, I have a question strictly interlinked with the point analyzed by Ruslan in his last uh, comments. Thanks, Ruslan, for having provided a, a phenomenological picture of the interconnection between uh, BST um, and other tax or uh, customs related to fraud and corruption. Uh, we have read interesting report published by the Center for the Study of Democracy uh, on some of these aspects. Um, I have a question about the interconnections between uh, this phenomenon and uh, EU criminal law justice and uh, its specific impact on the Bulgarian area. Um, how do you think that the introduction of the European Public Prosecutor's Office will improve the fight against VAT fraud in Bulgaria, considering that uh, this investigation will be limited transnational VAT related offenses causing a damage that is at least a 10 million years. Uh, is uh, it right this threshold set in the fifth directive and the DPOPO uh, regulation? And uh, what are the limitations uh, investigating VAT fraud of less than 10 million euros in your country? I think uh, Peter uh, uh, has already highlighted some relevant aspects like uh, lack of a specialized public investigator and others. So just this last question for you, if you have some comments about uh, the introduction of the PPO and also it's a limited competence in this field. So if it's a, a vulnerability. Yeah, thank you. Uh, about the uh, European Prosecution Office, I think that uh, um, yeah, it should have some positive uh, influence in Bulgaria, but uh, uh, the problem is that we are uh, a very small economy, not like Italy, for example. You have uh, really big cases and uh, 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 really uh, serious uh, crimes, I mean, uh, serious amounts. Uh, in Bulgaria, even the big companies uh, uh, are like uh, a size, uh, med like a medium companies in uh, in uh, big European countries. Uh, the, the, so uh, our tax fraud amounts are, let's say, quite different and uh, quite small related with uh, with the big cases uh like in netherlands uh, like in france uh, you know that uh, uh for example just um, just uh, from um uh, uh 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 carbon uh documents uh, uh, uh trade of carbon uh, uh carbon documents netherlands uh, has lost uh, uh, uh 500 billion uh, a million euro just for three months it's impossible in Bulgaria. Uh, and you know that the, the European Prosecution Office has a limitation, uh, I think that was uh, 5 uh, million euro or something like that. And this is quite big amount. Uh, Ten million at the moment. Uh, uh, how million was? 10, 10 million. Oh, 10, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's even bigger <laughs> yeah 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 um uh, yeah and that's why i think that um, 
uh, the 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 number of cases uh, that from uh, uh, for from Bulgaria, uh, which will be uh, in the field of competence of uh, European Prosecution Office, uh, will be quite small. Petar, if I can intervene, what do you think will be a threshold to let this become more effective in Bulgaria? If not the 10 million, 1 million, for example, give me a, a figure. Yeah, something like 1 million or something like that. But uh, of course, European Prosecution Office in this case uh, 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 will be overloaded with cases because uh, 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 here uh, they will have uh, cases from Bulgaria but uh, just uh, uh, imagine what uh, will happen uh, how many cases they will no, have this from, is from clear but, uh, but uh, maybe that uh, they can add uh, some different criteria not only the, the amount of the you yeah. know but also the seriousness of the fans the number of country participating so I think that uh, yeah. this can be something we can honestly push you mm -hmm. to yeah thank you very much uh, yeah, but, now the last yes, question. But this is this is the case of uh, legal framework. Yeah. Yeah. So the last question is, what are the best practices in the fight against tax crime and corruption that you think there is in Bulgaria that would would you like to export? And what if you had a magic wand, if you have a magic wand and say I would like to implement something today to to make us better in contrasting this kind of phenomenon, encountering them what would you like to implement in your country? So this is for everybody. So who would like to, to, to use the magic wand as the first uh, magician? Maybe I would, I would let me let me try this, uh, Costa. Of course, sorry for you know, but I would, I mean, and and and, and there are no, ma I mean, we <laughs> we understand by now that there is there are no magic tricks. Although Bulgaria <laughs> has been actually the European Prosecu Public Prosecutor's Office has been one of the ideas of. I mean, we've been trying. I mean, also the Magnitsky Act uh, designations. I could see people just saying okay let them handle this you know let the europeans or the americans handle this you know so there have been a lot of people you know that want to transfer this uh, gladly transfer this uh, uh, area of sovereignty to somebody else you know to deal with the uh, uh, with the bad stuff but i would say uh, i trust in uh, transparency and accountability so i would say there are two important things one is uh, the uh, uh professionalization of the uh of, of the whole chain of of like from prosecution courts and and tax administration and i would say it's particularly important that the tax administration is shielded from political interference uh because we've seen quite a lot you know we've seen a lot of changes in in the top level of the public administration of the of the tax administration for example uh, and this also, but this should come at the, you know, with a lot of transparency. So I would like to see annual reviews of what the administration has done, you know, how many cases there have been, and so on and, and so forth. So I would, I would want to have full transparency and public oversight on, uh, you know, anonymized data. So I believe that data should be much more available and discussed in uh, uh in in parliament and these are my five cents i don't want i don't want much with with the uh with with uh with the with the magic wand but if possible you know uh, that uh, uh people also understand that there is a link between the taxes they pay and the public services that they enjoy Rosal, this uh, is fantastic and uh, and i got both to your points the first one is the supranational check we really need it because sometimes we are stuck in a situation where we cannot handle these things uh, domestically. So a supranational check can help us, but at the same time, we have to deal with it anyway. So we need transparency and accountability. And, and you are right. Uh, and Vera, uh, when Ruslan said uh, transparency and you know, look at these things, I, we think that watchdogs, journalists, they play a fundamental role. 
how you would like to let this role to be more protected or in, you know what the, what do you need as journalists in bulgaria to do this watchdog uh, activity more efficiently i think we need more information and more transparency as ruswan said i think it's enough <laughs> Good. More transparency and more information that is public. public. Better and Bistra, what would you uh, what would you like to want? Uh, I cannot, uh, in my opinion, the application of random principle in the assignment of tax audit and uh, in the consideration of appeals under tax act in the face of uh, the administrative appeal. We need more random principle in the assignment of uh, tax audits and tax inspections, I think. And second, uh, maybe ensuring quality training in finance, uh, financial and uh, tax control of students in state universities. This reflects on the professional skills of tax control authorities. Thank you. And uh, Peta. Uh, magic, magic. We need the magic, of course. We need the people. The magic is not happening, Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here we are. Please say, say that again. But the magic is not happening. Yeah, of course. Uh, so um, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah we yeah. lost you. Okay, That's why it was not again? happening. We lost you. Can you say that again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the magic words? Yeah, yeah, the uh the yeah, the, the it, it's uh, it's indicator that the magic da doesn't work. I mean, uh the magic of course This is not working, Peta. It's okay. Let's just wait. Peter, sorry, you went off again. Can you repeat it? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, okay, magic, people to be clever and to act clever when they go to, to elect someone in elections. But- uh, This uh, is a fantastic point, Peter. I think that is, yeah. but this is real magic, real yeah, magic. Yeah, this is the, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, in realistic, we need the bureaucracy. I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, people complain that oh, European Union, a lot of bureaucracy, blah blah blah. No, we need a bureaucracy. We need the professionals uh, uh, that act on professional way, not in the political way. But uh, this is the big problem in Bulgaria uh, that uh, we don't have a bureaucracy in a good way of uh, of uh, meaning of that meaning. Yeah, the development and... of a healthy ethical professional class this is a, mm -hmm. even it is still magic yeah. in uh, other countries uh, but uh, i understand <laughs> the point you are right so with these words of peter i would like to conclude this fantastic workshop it was very intellectually stimulating i really enjoyed being with you and thank you for discussing such a sensitive and complex issue with us uh, i will let you know when the uh, publication will be on and, uh, and i will invite you to, 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 um, for the questionnaire. So don't be bored when <coughs> I will ask you, please. Uh, this is an anonymous questionnaire. So fill it in uh, that it will be filled by all the people all over these six countries. So thank you so much for everything. I will stop now the registration. Costa, can I just say big thank you to Peter, Bistra, Vera um, uh, for their participation today because we really, and, uh, and Petty, of course, we really exhausted their uh, you know, time, but thank you so much for sharing your, your views. Thank you. I absolutely agree. Thank you so much. It was fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank you.